Good morning, Tuesday morning, just back from the US. It's been a couple of days since I vlogged. Today, heading to Tel Aviv, back-to-back -back meetings all day, starting with the tech journalist, tech columnist at the Jerusalem Post, a place where I just started a new weekly column, one startup a week. So last week was my first week, and I'll be doing it every week on Thursdays. That's exciting. After that, I'm meeting an Instagram friend I've never met before, Dana Brody, for lunch, and then meeting the one and only, the legendary Amir Shvat, who basically started Google Tel Aviv campus, then he went to Slack, was there for a couple of years leading developers, and now he's at Twitch. Same thing, leading developers. Amazing dude, good friend, humble guy, love him. Then a couple other meetings, and back to back all day. It's gonna be great, I'm very excited about that. And then tomorrow, Powtoon. All right, let's do this. Rothschild Boulevard, meeting Eitan Khalon, the tech journalist at the Jerusalem Post. I think the editor-in-chief, Yaakov Kat, introduced us like six months ago, but between the two of our schedules, we were not able to meet until now. And it just happens to be that last week I started my own tech column in the Jerusalem Post, so good timing. In other news, Rothschild Boulevard is loud. A beautiful Tel Aviv morning, and I'm having coffee at a place I've never had coffee before with someone I've never met before. How many months ago did Yaakov introduce us? Uh, too many. Uh, like, we should have met already. I know, but you're busy and I'm busy, so it's all good. <laughs> it's all rough. good. But it, it, by the way, is the fact that we're meeting today have anything to do with it actually started this corner this week, or just coincidence? Well, it, no, it's a nice coincidence. Nice coincidence. <laughs> all right, who are you? What's your name? Uh, so my name's Eitan Khalon. Uh, my brother's name's Eitan, by the way. Beautiful name. Big fan. Big beautiful fan. name. Uh, Khalon as in window? No, Khalon as in it's, it's a made-up name, really. Okay. Uh, immigration and changing names during really? the Second World War. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's completely made uh, here, up. Here's a story I never told before. When my mom came to America, she was a little girl and she loved Superman and her name was Cohn. And they asked her at the border, what's your last name? She said, Kent, as in Clark. <laughs> so that was her name. So that became her name. Anyway. In fact, when I immigrated to Israel, it was in the middle of the night that I arrived at the uh, yeah. interior ministry and I completely forgot I had a middle name. So my middle name also went. Um, really? Anyway. It's funny. It's uh, funny. Embarrassing. Okay. Uh, so I am the business reporter at the Jerusalem Post. All right. Um, and you've been in Israel how long? For four and a half years. Four and a half years. And how is it, first of all? How's Israel? This is the 1st of January, sunny outside, sitting, having a coffee in the middle of the street. It's, it's, it's perfect. Nothing like it. It's no true. complaints. Yeah, England's, I mean, we're not going to talk about this stuff, but England's a little bit of a mess right now. A, li a little bit in, in, in more ways than one. Oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, my passport is getting slightly less valuable as we speak every, every, every day. Uh, okay, so you've been here four and a half years, and you're young. Is it, is it, is it, an, is it an offensive statement to say that you're in the beginning of your career? No, no, I'll take that. I mean, how many years have you been in the... In the, in the journalist world for about a, a year and a half. Got it. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so you're, I mean, when you say the business the business guy, I mean, you're covering, I mean, Israel's at the epicenter of everything in terms of business. So right. you're kind of like a very central role, I would say, in terms of the the organization, the, the publication, because, you know, it's the Jerusalem Post. I think Jerusalem was named, if I'm not mistaken, by Fast Company as one of, if not the fastest growing tech hub in the world. Right. Uh, Jerusalem seems to be the center of everything at the moment. Fastest tech hub, uh, also grow fastest growing tourist location in the whole world. Incredible. Um, you have so a big job. Uh, there's plenty to cover. Yeah. There's no shortage of news. I love it. So talk to me about like, what does a business journalist do at a, at a publication like, the, you know, the Jerusalem Post? Talk to me. What does your day look like? Basically, I'm covering the entire startup world. Talking and to the right person. I'm just yeah, saying. Right. <laughs> uh, everything that's going on when it's tech, economy, and, and there is so much going on in Israel. I'm trying to cover it all, which is right. a pretty big challenge. Right. But there's so much going on, and I'm learning plenty every day. So that's the most and, important thing, by the way. Right, and I'm trying to pass on that educational experience to the readers as love well. Love it, I love it. So, you know, what's interesting, I always say this when I speak globally about Israeli tech, is that, you know, once upon a time, let's say five, ten years ago, Israel dominated in the cybersecurity space, mm -hmm. right? And that was their thing, because of the military, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Today, there's almost, almost no sector, no vertical of technology in which Israel is not either number one or number two in the world. Maybe blockchain is still a little bit weaker, Consumer maybe still a little bit weaker, 
But other than that, drone technology, automotive technology, enterprise technology, big data technology, it, it just goes on. It, Israel is number one or number two in the world. And, and in fact, all the entrepreneurs that I meet in these different sectors say, well, you know, cyber is a great success story for Israel, but these new emerging markets can be even greater. And healthcare? Healthcare. It's huge mm -hmm. in Israel, right? Mm -hmm. I just met with TriVentures the other day. You know those guys, TriVentures? Mm -hmm. They're amazing, amazing VC. And uh, also, we were just sitting here and Yaron Carney walked by, another VC that you should know about. I'm going to introduce you. But um, in any case, listen, the bottom line is, I'm really happy we got to meet, even though it took us six months. But it was worth the wait. Uh, and like I said to you, you know, our, our goals are aligned, which is to tell the story of Israeli technology. In your case, it's expanded beyond technology, it's business, but I also touched on the business world a little bit. So uh, hopefully we will um, continue the dialogue. And again, there's no strings attached. I'm just ha I, want, I want you to win because if you win, I win, we all win. That's the bottom line. And uh, give Yaakov a big hug for me. Yaakov's the editor in chief. And uh, do give me feedback, by the way, on my corner once we've got you know, a couple of pieces up because I only did one. But I love your feedback as a uh, professional journalist. Of course. And uh, yeah, let's just continue the, the discussion. Looking forward to it. Right, man. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. And you. Only in Tel Aviv. This is a, like a major only in Tel Aviv moment. I'm standing at the red light waiting for my next meeting to come. And the one and only, and I use the words one and only often, but oh, in this case. You're so sweet, you're so sweet. You know, the one and only, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, 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 look at my hands, they're shaking. You're, you're like, I mean, I've been following your work for l longer. I just don't even know, who are you? Tell me who you are. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Dana Rielli. Uh, I'm a professor of psychology and behavioral economics, and I am very interested in figuring out what people do wrong and how we can fix it a little bit. You know, I, I've literally read every single article that you've put out. I'm not even joking, in the last easily five to, five to 10 years. Everything you do with Lemonade, brilliant. Thank you. I'm Thanks. absolutely loving your work. Please keep it up. And, you know, like I wasn't going to turn on the camera because I was kind of starstruck, but <laughs> you agreed and I appreciate that. Now I'm going to, since I'm already out of my comfort zone, I'm going to yeah, go out of more. Go for it, go for it, push it, push What do I have to do to get a cup of coffee with you? What do you have to go? Uh, first of all, I am a little late for a meeting. So not right so now. It's not going to happen, but uh, send me an email. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. I'll and, turn this off. Um, Don't tell it on camera. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm happy to, to do it. Uh, there's a question of, uh, are there people who are lucky? And the answer is yes. And it turns out it's not that some people are lucky like in the casino. Right. Uh, luck in life is about trying more things, right? If you if you wait for 100% success, it will take too long. But if you seed many seeds and you cut the things that don't work quickly off, Love it. you'll be much more successful. So trying, getting out of your comfort zone is a really good advice for 2019. Two things, very Michael Jordan, right? Taking yeah, yeah, exactly. hundred yeah. and lean startup, iterating and cutting. Okay. I love it. Absolutely. So I'm gonna turn this off because I only have one more request and that's the selfie, but I'm gonna send you an email. A cup of coffee would be a dream come true for me because I'm a huge fan. I'm turning this thing off. Thank you so much, sure. appreciate it. Not many people make me shake like Don Ariely. Dan Ariely is a world-renowned expert, a genius. There's no other word. I cannot believe that I just had the chance to meet him. I'm like trembling here. I'm heading to Mitos now. I've not been there in a while to meet Dana Brody, who I connected with on Instagram. I never met her. Zero context, zero agenda. Just meeting someone who seems to be highly talented, and I'm late. What a beautiful day in Tel Aviv today. The weather today, it doesn't get much better than this. I'm leaving Mitos right now. How was that steak? Amazing. Okay, we're going to meet Amir Shvat from Slack, now Twitch, previously Google. And can you tell their sisters? Who are you guys? Who are you? Not the Kardashians. I'm Donna Brody. I'm Leah Brody. Okay, so you know what's funny? I'm pretty sure I called you Dana before on the vlog. <laughs> it's spelled D-A-N-A. Do a lot of people call you that? Dana? A long way? Americans, not No, Australian. it's D-A. You're Israeli now. But Donna's D-O-N-N-A, no? Talk to my parents. My mom's Israeli. I hear that. That's true. Okay, so, so say it again. Who are you? Donna Brody. And Leah Brody. Leah Brody, and what I'm do you do? Your, I'm a lawyer. But I'm a lot more therapist. than that, right? <laughs> yes. So we, we, we share a problem. We don't know how to explain what we do. But let's, a little background. Where did you go to school? I went to Queen's College and then Penn Law. Okay, can we, Penn Law sounds a lot more you know, impressive than Queen's <laughs> I went College. To Penn Law. <laughs> to Penn Law. Like, she's like, you know, now in addition to you being a lawyer, you're, the way we connected is your super duper active kind of Instagram pro Israel activity. Yeah, and in personal. Tell me Not about that a little Instagram. bit. Right, but I was saying we connected. Yeah, so basically, our, thank God our parents have been involved in Israel activism our whole lives, and now we've taken it upon ourselves as young professionals 
to also get involved running events, meeting politicians, and honestly sharing the truth also on social media platforms, which are really effective. A lot of people see what we post and message us about it. So a lot of people are activists and pro-Israel, but you are able to get, because of your parents' activity, because of your activity, to, by the way, the sun is right in my eyes. <laughs> Finally a nice day, Sorry. I'm not complaining. You guys have sunglasses on. <laughs> the, uh, you're, you're, the relationships that you're able to cultivate over the year, you're connected with like anyone and everyone. Tell me about that a little bit. Who are your, look what's going on here, by the way. It's in a part high country. Muslim on the floor, <laughs> praying in middle Tel Aviv. Check that out. Check Real it. time, that is a Muslim on the floor in Tel Aviv. Could I go into Gaza and do that? I'm just saying. Not gonna go political, Definitely but. Definitely not. Definitely there you go, not. that's all I'm saying. We'll start zoom in for right Okay, here. so, wait, so you tell me a little bit about like the relationships that you guys have. You tell me. I am at Chaked. Where were you yesterday? Or two days ago? The no. Yes, two days ago, okay. Yeah, on Wednesday we were at the Knesset. Meeting? I am Chaked. Michael yes. Oren. Top dogs. How do you guys know all these people? We've been to events with them. We've had the opportunity to meet them, introduce them at events. Let's cross here. And I was also lucky enough to start the Israel Club at Penn Law. So I was able to meet a lot of you know, representatives of the Israeli army, generals, and Love of the Israeli police. Love it. No, I was trying to convince you before to come to Israel, but maybe you should actually stay in America for now so you can keep doing what you're doing from America. It's very important. That's what my parents have been doing. Most importantly, what's your Instagram account? Dana Adaret, spelled like Dana, D-A-N-A. Yeah. Adaret, A-D-E-R-E-T. All right, Mine Joseph, is non-existent. Put her Instagram there. You, we got to work on you a little bit and get you on. You're not on anything. Not on anything? Snapchat. <laughs> Check, she'll join. No, literally, you're not on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, nothing? Snapchat. Snapchat, what's your Snapchat? Princess Leah. Princess, <laughs> really? L-E-A? I didn't make it up myself, sorry. Like L-E-A or what? L-I-A. L-I-A. <laughs> Follow her on Snapchat if, you, if that's your thing. All right, guys, I'm going to turn this thing off because my arm's killing me now. Let's get to Serona. Thanks, Thanks for lunch. It's a lot of fun. I'm in one of my favorite places, Serona Market here. Love this place. With one of my favorite people. How are you? I'm not just saying that because he has the best hair in tech. Oh. All right, no, but seriously, now no joke. You know what? I know you're like a super humble guy, and I always talk about the correlation between greatness and humility. I find that the greater the person, the smaller their ego, and you, in my opinion, illustrate that point perfectly. So you're gonna you're gonna forgive me for embarrassing you right now, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Amir Shvat, who, you know, if you don't know Amir Shvat, then I don't know what rock you've been living under, but he's kind of a legend around these parts in the tech world. No, he is. I know he's shaking his head. I can't even see him, but I know he's shaking his head. But let me let me just give a little background here, and you correct me if I'm wrong about anything I'm about to say, right? Okay. All right, Amir Shvat started Google Tel Aviv campus along with his friend Ayal Miller. And Yossi, and Professor Yossi Matias. And Yossi Matias, who's amazing. Okay. True? True. Beautiful. So, then started Google Tel Aviv campus. Okay. Then, he went to probably the hottest company in tech. Not only did he go there, he was an exec there leading developer relations at Slack. One of the hottest companies in tech. True? True. Cool. Then he left that, and now he's working at a company that is widely regarded as the only company on the internet that can and is competing with YouTube, Twitch. True? I, work, you're not I, I work for Twitch, yes. No, I'm saying, okay, you wouldn't call yourself a YouTube competitor, but at the scale. Now, it's Amazon right now, right? I mean, it is Amazon. Amazon acquired Twitch, and your role there? I work on the developer products and services. I'm the VP of the... Yeah, so, like, yeah. you see, if I was vice president at Amazon, I wouldn't be like, I work on it. I'd be like, I'm vice president at Amazon. I wouldn't say bitch, but well, there are kids watching. Beep that out. But the point is, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're, I know you're, I, I gotta do more. You gotta pay me for PR, man. But the reality is, listen, you've done incredible things, incredible things. You're just getting started. I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're young. I was very fortunate. You see what I'm talking about? You're a hard worker, my friend. You're working hard. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about your role at Twitch slash Amazon. What do you do there? So we have a vision. To t you know what Twitch is. Twitch helps. Well, tell, tell, tell the people that are watching if they don't know what Twitch is. So Twitch helps people stream their favorite game or experiences and create communities around those. Okay. Uh, and my vision is to turn Twitch into a place where you don't only watch the experience, it becomes an interactive experience. Okay. So you're watching uh, Fortnite and you buy the favorite s uh, skin of okay. your favorite streamer. Right. Or you uh, watch Fortnite or uh, PUBG and you uh, push a health button and you help the streamer. Or you bet on the uh, outcome of okay. the of So the more of an interactive uh, We want engaging. to create, we want to turn viewers into active participants. Love it. Let me ask you a question. Are you a gamer? I am a gamer. Have you always been a gamer? I have always been a gamer. That doesn't surprise me, but I didn't know that about you. Yeah, I love Diablo. I don't even know what that is. Um, it is an awesome game. I, I literally and last Stone is one of my favorite. Dude, games the last well. video game I played was like Super Mario Brothers. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, like in, in we, Atari. We have streamers <laughs> that play that, so you should definitely join Twitch. I, I'm like so not a gamer. I, I my kids obviously, you know, what's the name of the big one that you named just now? One of the they were getting Super Fortnite. The, Fortnite, the dance moves, right? That's all I know yeah. about them. Yeah. So they're as big as uh, I think we uh, we launched this statistic that in the last. Uh, 
first six months, uh, Fortnite was watched 17,000 years. That's such, which is, that is such a bananas. Two hours for every man, woman, and child in Europe. Okay. That's, but that's like actually ridiculous. Yes. That's just genuinely ridiculous. So people are spending a lot of time on the communities. Okay, so where's the office, by the way? Where are your offices? It's in San Francisco, country? downtown San Francisco. Is there one office? Oh, we have, I have, an, we have another office in Irvine, uh, another office in Seattle, another one in New York, wow. uh, one in London. When well. was Twitch founded? Off the top of your head? Sorry for putting oh, you on the spot. That's a hard question. When was it acquired by Amazon? Twitch. Two years ago. Two years ago. Do we, I, I, pardon my ignorance. Like I said, I'm so not in the world. Like, do we know the numbers or is that close public? to a billion dollars? For, acquired for close to a billion. And the founder, by the way, of Twitch uh, is Justin Khan, who was called Justin TV, who I met back in Snapchat days. Super cool dude. And that guy's also building something new. Super interesting. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Even, I don't remember. In the medical space, I want to say? In the lawyer, I, legal space. Yes. I legal space. So. Okay. So Google, Slack, Twitch. Talk to me about that. How's it been? It's been awesome. It's been a crazy ride. I, mean, I really like these companies. I'm, I feel, again, very fortunate to have been working with them. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll, t I'll, I'll take it and be like, okay, yeah, fortunate and good luck and on, right time, right place. But I mean, Amir, you're good at what you do. Yes, that's true. I, I, I like places where I can enable developers to build something that is bigger than uh, than what you are what you're capable of building so if you think about a mobile phone uh, the mobile phone is much more valuable with a lot of developers building a lot of apps right Beautiful. I'm sure you're using a lot of that 100% right? so that's 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 where my sweet spot is finding uh, places where developers could be much more successful uh, and create a much more higher level of value I got it so I mean we talk about the iPhone that changed everything I'm not even gonna get to the iPhone Android thing it really doesn't matter it's the same for Android but we don't realize that when Apple announced the first iPhone, there was no App Store yet. And that isn't what caused the breakthrough. It was the App Store that, broke, that, that caused the breakthrough because now all of a sudden developers can partake in this thing called the mobile revolution. They can be a part of that. And yep. so developers and ecosystems in general is obviously super core to the success of any product today. Now I'm gonna just say one thing because this is a major pain point for me. Why does Twitter not get that? Oh, I think Twitter is trying to get that. I think they're doing a lot of work trying to uh, build a good set of APIs. I'm, I'm working with some of these guys, and I think they are trying, but it's, it's work in progress. So I'll tell you what I think about Twitter. Okay? Yeah, of course. So I think the developers made Twitter. I don't think the Twitter.com 140 character thing is what made Twitter Twitter. It's the developers and the developer ecosystem that made Twitter. And now, all of a sudden, I feel like they're slowly, slowly shutting down all those APIs. Like, for example, I use TweetBot, right? Now, all of a sudden, tons of like push notifications don't work in, in third-party uh, AP, uh, uh, apps anymore of Twitter all the polls and all those advanced features only work in the Twitter apps now, I understand they want to bring you know users to their actual core product but again my opinion and I don't mean to diss on Twitter because I live on Twitter and I love Twitter it's to me a core fundamental mistake in the growth of any company to um, kind of ban or, or I don't know what to call it like blacklist or just annoy your developer community especially when the developer community is the one that built the platform just my opinion no no comment needed okay I, no, not I, 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 I actually love Twitter. Like literally, it's the platform I spend most time on. What are your thoughts on Snap? Snap. I think when I talk to people in the Silicon Valley, they're all using Instagram right now. I, uh, enough said. Because I was I was all over Snap, and I just I I, del I actually deleted it from my phone. That's never happened. But like to me, it was so much noise and so little value and so little. It was just not mainstream. It never really hit the mainstream. So to me, it was. I just, think Instagram is an amazing product, and I and Instagram, I really enjoy it. Instagram to me is like the. Cinderella of tech, you know, it's just a crazy story how they and they're, and they're and by the way I just had this conversation with an entrepreneur an hour ago like people talk about Instagram and Facebook and whatever and it's success People don't realize that it wasn't an idea and it wasn't like a technology. It was Execution 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 that brought these companies to the level of success. That they're at right now 100% not even 99 but It was 100% execution. No one period ever in history executed like Mark Zuckerberg did in my opinion Is that a fair statement? I think it's the their execution is amazing. All right I know he's being very you have to be very diplomatic. I understand you're a, te you're a tech executive Executive in Silicon Valley. But anyway, listen, Amir. Yes. As always, it's good to see you, my friend. Fantastic to see you. I only have one more request. Yes. Two more requests. Number one, and you could say no. Like I said, you're a sought after entity, especially here, but around the world in tech. And a lot of people would love the ability to pick your brain. Now, don't imagine you want to give out your email address, but what is the best platform for people to reach out to you? Where are you spending most of your time today? Right now, Twitter. Okay, so A Shvat at Twitter. A Shvat at a Twitter. S H E V A T. Yes. Beautiful. That's the first question. The second question. Drum roll, please. What am I about to ask? 
Gosh, I have no idea. Yes, you do. <laughs> what, do you want? What, what do I want from you I on the air? No idea. What do I want right. from you on the air? What did I always want from you in every company you worked at? Oh, swag. Yes, where's yes. my Twitch swag? Oh, I'm gonna bring you some. Swag. I, he, I'm gonna send you Google, some. Google, he hooked me. I have like a, a closet of Google and and, and swag. Slack swag at home. I don't have any Twitch swag. It's not I'm a good thing. Look at my look at my socks, by the way. Ooh, Recognize nice. Envision, baby. What do you think? I love I love Envision. Okay. You guys use Envision swag. Do you know Envision? Sorry. Envision. Oh yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. Envision socks. That's awesome. You know Clark, CEO of Envision? I'm gonna. Oh, let me try to. Do you know Clark Valberg? Get you some swag here. I love, I love our, I love my ADD. Do you know Clark Valberg, the CEO of Envision? No. Okay, this is gonna be the best intro I ever made for you. Okay. Mark my words. What here, I have some stick swag stickers. Sticker. For my kids, I'll take it. Never awesome. say no to stickers. Hello, I'm some going to introduce you. Listen to me. I'm gonna introduce you to Clark Valberg, the CEO of Envision. You trust me? Yes, of course. Meet the guy. It will be the best intro I ever made for you. I made quite a few intros. This will be the best intro I ever made for you. Awesome. He is, I mean, you just raised a hundred and something, he's a $1.9 billion company now, I think. Like, oh, wild, wild. Every success. intro from you is a good No, but intro. Clark is a whole different level. He's like my guru slash rabbi. Anyway, Amir, this was uh, amazing, always, as always, to hang out with you. I'm sure we'll, we'll hang out again in, uh, over there in Silicon Valley. But, um, you know, it's great when you come visit. I, I, I apologize that I can never come to, like, the events at night because, for me, night is, like, kid time. And I know you guys, that you, and also, I want one-on-one time. I don't want this mass crowding on Mir Shvat, you know? Uh, but listen, like I said before, anything I can do to help, not that you need my help, but if there's anything I can ever do to help you win in any way, shape, or form, it goes without saying. Of course. Give me that honor and privilege. Thank you. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the time. Have a good one. Breaking news. The man has located some Twitch swag. What? Uh, that is a. I I love those, by the way. AWS and Twitch. Oh, my. And... That's super geeky. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much, man. I'm heading to my next meeting. Appreciate the time. That dude is a real legend in the tech space. Super humble. Heading now to my next meeting and a couple of phone calls. So I'm going to call it a day. See you tomorrow.